Hi, I'm Danny Jha and I'm presenting the Crafter environment. Crafter is an environment for reinforcement learning research for agents that either learn with or without external rewards. It is an open world survival game featuring randomly generated 2D terrain, including forests, lakes, mountains, caves and shores. The player needs to forage for food and water, find shelter to sleep and defend against monsters, collect resources, which in turn let it build better tools and then collect even more resources. The environment is optimized for research. It is designed to pose specific research challenges, it allows to meaningfully evaluate a broad spectrum of different agent abilities, and allows for fast iteration times to accelerate research progress. To show you the environment, we start with a walkthrough of a human expert. The player starts off by collecting wood, the most basic resource. It then creates a workbench to craft tools such as a pickaxe and a sword. With a pickaxe it can now dig through the rock. Now it's getting night, so the player digs a cave and closes it so that it can sleep without monsters attacking it. In between all these things, the player has to repeatedly find water sources to drink enough and chase the cows to eat. A more predictable source of food is to plant saplings and wait for them to grow fruits that can be eaten. The player has also placed the furnace to create iron tools. The iron pickaxe now finally allows the player to mine the diamond, and the iron sword is stronger than the other ones. There are some skeletons, so the player dodged the arrows. And finally, the fruits are grown to eat. And after searching the map for the while, the player finally finds the diamond and completes all the 22 achievements. Now, there are already a lot of environments used for reinforcement learning research. So how is Crafter different? Well, the most similar environment is obviously Minecraft that has been used for reinforcement learning research. Minecraft is an exciting long-term research challenge, but many of the complex behaviors that we would hope to learn there are completely out of reach for current methods. Moreover, Minecraft was not designed for research. It is difficult to set up because it requires Java and opens a window. It is slow to simulate and only a few standard tasks have been established so far. The goal of Crafter is not to replace Minecraft, but to progress faster towards it. Atari and Procgen are established benchmark suites. The main problem with them is that they require vast computational resources, because every task is defined in a separate environment. So instead of training just one agent, you have to train one agent for each environment, often for many million steps. Moreover, Atari and Procgen are not ideal for studying unsupervised reinforcement learning because they are not open-ended enough. There are usually only very few meaningful things that the agent can do at any point in time. NetHack is quite similar to Crafter in that it requires learning complex long-term behaviors, with the difference being that it only has purely symbolic inputs, whereas Crafter uses visual inputs and thus requires some representation learning. Moreover, NetHack is challenging because it requires the agent to memorize the many rules of the game dynamics. Whereas in Crafter, complex dynamics emerge from a small set of simple rules that should be easy for the agent to learn if it is able to generalize well. So in comparison to these existing environments, Crafter is written purely in Python, it is easy to install, to use, and even to modify. There are 22 tasks defined within a single environment, so one training run will give you 22 scores that measure different skills of the agent. 
Despite this, Crafter operates within the standard RL training protocol with a single reward function. The tasks are designed to broadly cover the meaningful behaviors in the environment, and thus are also useful as proxy metrics for evaluating unsupervised agents. Because the 2D environment is simpler than Minecraft, agents can learn much faster. And finally, Crafter allows full access to semantic information about the world state for debugging or for probing representation learning methods. Here are the 22 tasks or achievements that the agent can unlock within each episode. These correspond to meaningful milestones in agent behavior and can be unlocked in any feasible order. Examples here are to collect resources such as wood or stone or coal, to drink water from a lake, find food, create new items or defeat, uh, or defeat monsters. Crafter provides a sparse reward for reinforcement learning agents. It is simply plus one every time an achievement is unlocked for the first time during the current episode. And there is a small penalty for losing health points and the bonus for regenerating them. The sparse reward serves as a learning signal for reinforcement learning agents but evaluation is done based on success rate on all the 22 tasks. Specifically, the success rates are computed across all training episodes leading up to the 1 million time step budget. Looking at the different success rates provides insights into the spectrum of agent abilities, as we will see later. And then, similar to other benchmark suites, we compute a score that aggregates the success rates across all tasks. We use a geometric mean here, which is an average in log space, this prefers agents that unlock many different achievements, including some hard ones, over agents that simply unlock easy achievements very often and would increase a normal average that way. The geometric mean is important, especially when aggregating across tasks of varying difficulty levels, which is the case in Crafter. Another benefit of covering many difficulties is that any agent will receive useful feedback, whether it is a weak agent or a strong agent which is useful for debugging and prototyping. The goal of Crafter is to provide a general measure of agent abilities. Here are some of the open research challenges for improving the score of agents in Crafter. Exploring the technology tree of different tools which unlock new materials, which then unlock even better tools, requires both wide and deep exploration. Moreover, agents can't memorize individual inputs or the map layout because every episode is randomly generated and so the agent constantly finds itself in novel situations that it needs to generalize to. There are many repeated behaviors necessary, such as collecting basic resources like food or water. Credit assignment is challenging because of the sparse rewards and the long dependencies, such as planting a sapling and then waiting for several hundred time steps before the fruit has grown and can be harvested. And finally, the agent only observes a local view of the map, so it is beneficial for it to remember the map of everything it has seen already, for example, to find the nearest water source when it needs to drink, or to remember where it already has been when it's searching for rare resources on the map. Here we can see the learning progress of three agents that use the provided task reward. The optimal reward is 22, which corresponds to unlocking all achievements within the episode. We now look at the benchmark scores, which are the aggregated success rates across all 22 tasks. On the left side, we compare different agents starting from a random baseline, two unsupervised agents, R&D and plan to explore, and then three agents that use the reward, Rainbow, PPO, and Dreamer V2. We can see that the best agent achieves a score of around 11% aggregated success rate. On the right side, we show the same scores with an estimate of the human expert performance, which is about 50% in Crafter. This shows that there is a lot of room for future research to improve performance, both for agents with reward and without reward. Looking at the success rates for individual tasks or achievements offers insights into the ability spectrum of the agent. These are the success rates for the agents trained with rewards. And here are the success rates for unsupervised agents. The human experts dataset is available for download we recorded 100 episodes across five expert players that practiced the game for several hours beforehand. All players were able to unlock the 22 achievements, but rarely within a single episode. The expert dataset is useful for estimating the human baseline performance, but it can also be used for research on learning from demonstrations or as diverse evaluation data for probing representation learning. 
To study the possible behaviors in Crafter, we also trained an agent for much longer, about 50 million time steps, and report the interesting emergent behaviors, such as building tunnels and bridges across lakes, finding strategies to dodge arrows and outsmart skeletons, finding or digging caves and closing them to sleep safely at night. and growing many plants to ensure a steady and sustainable food supply. In summary, here are some learnings from developing the crafter environment. First of all, we should really switch to evaluating many tasks per environment. This substantially reduces the computational requirements necessary for evaluating agents across many tasks. Moreover, it provides insights into the spectrum of agent abilities. For example, it might be good at tasks that require fast reflexes, but bad at tasks that require long-term memory, allowing us to focus our research on the next bottleneck. And finally, defining many tasks in the environment provides a more meaningful evaluation for unsupervised RL agents. For aggregating scores, the geometric mean has the benefit of automatically weighting tasks based on how difficult they are. Tasks with low success rate are weighted more strongly in the geometric mean, this means an agent that sometimes collects a diamond would be scored much higher than an agent that always collects trees and other very simple things. And finally, the experiments show that learning complex long-term behaviors is very far from solved, even in a 2D environment. And Crafter allows to focus on this research problem with fast iteration times. If you're interested in Crafter, you can very easily install the game and play it yourself on the computer. We support Linux, Mac, and Windows. On the project website, you can find many resources, including the code of the environment, the code for plotting scripts, the code for reproducible baselines as Docker files, the scores of all the experiments in the paper, and the human dataset. danija.com slash crafter.